we are going to discuss about elastic flexural torsional buckling. First, let me explain why I have considered uh, this topic. Uh, when we talk about design of steel structures as per IS 800 2007, then we have to design these structures as per limited design method. Now, uh, as per limited design method, we have to design these structures for the most critical limited design and thereafter we have to cross check uh, each for the uh, other limit states. Elastic flexural torsional buckling is one of the uh, limit state which we have to consider for the design of steel structure and it is specifically critical for design of open cross sections which are slender. Whenever this limit state is governing, we cannot utilize the complete strength of the member. So we will try to see in this video what is this elastic flexural torsional buckling uh, is all about, how it is being considered in IS 800 2007, uh, how it has been considered in the software as well as uh, what, what should be the way forward. So first let us try to understand what is elastic flexural torsional buckling. It is critical for the member who has much in-plane bending stiffness as compared to the lateral stiffness. So whenever we will apply in-plane bending movement to this kind of member then it is having a tendency to buckle into the lateral direction. So as we see in this uh, figure that the cantilever beam is having the point load and because of the point load it, it is having the in-plane bending moment. But what we can see that there is a twisting of the member. So there is a lateral moment as well as the twisting of the member. So that's why this limit state is called as the elastic uh, flexural torsional uh, buckling. There are several factors which can affect this uh, limit state like uh, material properties, geometric properties, cross-sectional properties, uh, boundary conditions as well as the loading conditions. Now let's try to understand how it has been considered in IS 800 2007. In clause number 8.2.2.1 formula has been given for evaluating the critical moment for the elastic flexural torsional buckling. Now this equation is derived whenever we, we apply the uniform moment across the member. So it also may be known as a simplified approach. So in this case of a uniform moment condition, each section of the member will be reaching to the a critical moment of buckling together. As mentioned in the code, for the generalized condition, we have to refer an annexure E of the code. And in annexure E, the detailed formula has been given and this formula is having three factors uh, C1, C2 and C3. So it is also known as a three factor formula. The factor C1 is dependent upon the variation of uh, bending moment uh, across the length of the member. C2 is height of application of load above uh, shear center. C3 is about uh, non-symmetry of the cross section about uh, both the axes. K is for a different boundary conditions. Table 42 of the code gives different values of C1, C2, C3 and coefficient K for different conditions. Okay, so very quickly we have discussed the difference between the simplified approach and the generalized approach. Now let us try to see how it has been considered in the software. If we adopt a simplified approach in our design, then let us try to see what will be the error in our design. So as we have discussed that there may be several conditions like uh, variation in the cross-sectional properties, variation in the support conditions, variation in the loading conditions. So if we consider the value whatever we get from the simplified approach as a 1, then uh, uh, and if we consider that value as a benchmark and then let's try to see that what would be the error if we, if we go for the exact calculation using the generalized approach which is given in the annexure E. Uh, so we undertook certain examples and based on that, uh, what, what we have observed that the, the value of MCR can be as high as 2.75 times. That means our results could be 2.75 times on the conservative side in certain cases. At the same time, in the certain cases, the results could be substantially on the unconservative side, which is uh, 0.3 MCR. So if we are erring too much on the conservative side, then the whole purpose of the limited design method is lost. And in any case, the unconservative design is not accepted. 
Now, as we have discussed that value of C1 depends upon the variation of bending moment across the length of the member. Now, if we talk about a typical structure, then we will have around thousands of members. So, it is practically impossible to define exit value of C1 for all different loading conditions. Now, in the certain foreign codes, the automated formulas are given for the calculation of the C1 exactly based on the variation of the bending moment. So, the software will be calculating those values automatically uh, for the C1. But in IS 800 2007, those uh, automated formulas are not given. So, th those uh, have not become part of the software. So, software is asking us to enter the value of a C1. So, naturally, we uh, have to enter the value on the conservative side because we, we don't know exact value based on the uh, variation of the bending moment diagram which is happening in the all different uh, load conditions. Okay, so in summary, elastic flexural torsional buckling is the very much important parameter for the design of steel structures, specifically for the open cross sections which are uh, slender. And if we consider the simplified approach uh, for the steel structure design for this limit state as per the uh, code what we have discussed so far, then the values for uh, MCR can vary significantly. It may err on the unconservative side or it may err on the conservative side in specific cases. So, in my opinion, software also should be authenticated when we are uh, performing steel structure design and the engineer should be aware that uh, uh, what is the exact methodology or philosophy which is being considered in the software for these uh, particular limit state.